All right, pre takeoff briefing. Runway 30, that makes sense. We got 250 winds set at six. Looking like it's a little stronger right now. Good. Uh, So, runway 30. Um, wind is a right crosswind. Take a briefing. Runway 30, got a left, uh, a left crosswind there. Hello, aviators. Welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, I'm going to tell you about pre takeoff briefings, which are designed to get your mind in front of the airplane um, to make sure that you're ready for anything that might happen, and also just to make sure that you haven't forgotten some of the routine items that have caused pilots in the past to crash. Um, these types of standardizations are how the professionals achieve the safety record that they do achieve, which is um, pretty remarkable and uh, it's so important to them that I had a chief pilot of a cargo company tell me one time when we were preparing candidates for his simulator interview that if the candidates did not brief the takeoff in the simulator in the simulator that he was definitely not going to hire them right so he wanted to see this fundamental habit in place before he hired anybody onto his pilot corps so why is this so important well, the way standardization works, and by the way, if you want to kind of really understand the way I think about standardization, you should check out my iBook called Setting the Standard. Um, but the way this works fundamentally is an accident will occur in the real world, and what the professional operators do is they look at it, they figure out what went wrong, and they develop a procedure that prevents the possibility of that accident from ever occurring again. They make the procedure redundant, and they force compliance among their pilot corps, and boom once and done, nine times out of 10. Um, a good example is in 2007, we had a regional jet that departed the wrong runway. It lined up, it, the runways had a co-joined approach end. They lined up on the wrong runway, they didn't have enough runway, and almost everybody was killed on takeoff. So I happened to be in a pilot's lounge a few weeks later and I just asked everybody, hey, did, did, you all, you know, did your procedures change as a result of that accident? And without missing a beat, Everybody in the room said, oh yeah, you know, they've changed and everybody basically told the same story. You know, that the pilot flying now has to visually identify the runway number, call it out to the pilot monitoring, uh, the pilot monitoring has to verify it, then they line up with the runway, they check the mag compass, the heading indicator, call it out, pilot monitoring verifies it. So. I figure if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I came straight back and modified the procedure that I teach pilots, which is essentially this. There are four things we review that are, you know, kind of the normal part, just forgetting the, you know, so we don't forget the rote items. And then we get ready for the emergencies. So the four things are identifying the runway entrance, the runway number, um, identifying the wind conditions to make sure they match the ATIS or the ASOS. Uh, picking an abort point where if we don't have 70% of the speed by the halfway point of the runway, we abort the takeoff. And reviewing what a thousand feet above the airport actually is on the altimeter so that at that altitude we can do a climb checklist and make sure it's safe to continue the flight. Um, then we go through the emergencies. What happens if, there are, if there's a fire or failure on the runway, um, a fire or failure after rotation with runway remaining, and a fire or failure uh, after rotation without runway remaining. And in this phase, it's important that you kind of rehearse everything, touch the items, figure out, you know, where's the fuel pump? I'm gonna push everything forward. I'm gonna open the doors, whatever it is, make sure that you get the muscle memory involved. Let's watch this first example of how Paul does it. He does an excellent job here and uh, let's watch this. This is Paul and I on a flight lesson and uh, him giving me the pre-takeoff briefing. It's full idle and we'll back up. Okay, take a briefing, one way three zero, Got a left, uh, a left crosswind there. Our yeah. abort point is that second wind suck there. If we don't have 70% of our rotation speed by that time, so um, 48 knots, um, we will abort. If on rotation we have an engine problem, if there's runway remaining, throttle to idle, push forward, land on the runway. If there's no runway remaining, we'll make sure everything's forward, fuel pump on, cycle the mags, cycle the fuel tanks. If there's no recovery, mixture cut off, cut off the fuel, mags off, crack the doors, keep the electrics on. Um, in case we need the flaps, then we would land wingtip to wingtip. 1,000 feet on the altimeter is 1,000 feet. And um, the first turn here, we're going to go downwind. And then, actually, I'll just brief that for you, make sure I know what the woodside departure is. Um, for a, a woodside departure, we go downwind, and then um, when we see woodside road, we um, initiate a right-hand turn. 
Tip. All right, you can see Paul pretty much cranks through that. So one of the challenges as you go forward and build this into the you know the way you fly is to bring your attention to bear here. Make sure that you're not just rattling it off. Make sure that you're really thinking through if the next two minutes of my life are some of the most exciting I've ever had, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna touch? You have to imagine that this is a real possibility for you. Let's watch Alex do it. He wasn't quite as polished as Paul. He was just working this into his system. We kind of watch him struggle with it, but he's trying to, to hear what I'm saying and sort of build this into the way he flies. All right, pre-takeoff briefing. Here we are at runway 30. At this airport, 1,000 feet above the field is 1,000 feet and 5 feet. <laughs> uh, Roger. The, the plan is for a uh, right cross or bay, sorry, not bay meadows, uh, Belmont slew departure. If we lose the engine while we are on the runway with available runway for stopping, we will stop there. If we lose the engine in the air with available runway, we'll put it back down and stop. If we lose the engine in, when we are um, in the air without available runway, we'll make a slight right turn to a um, uh, little pond off there, down to the right, since there are all these office buildings. And um, let's see, the wind is 310 at, I think he said four. So, um, so that'll even be an, uh, an upwind turn, which is great. Awesome. Uh, if we are high uh, enough uh, that we can turn around and come back to the field with the two of us and the loading of the plane, we'll call that 500 feet today, then we can uh, attempt a teardrop turnaround and bring it back to the field. That's going to look like this. We'll be in takeoff configuration, go all forward, fuel pump on, everything in, and glide 65 if the engine doesn't come back. So you can see he gets to everything, but it's not quite as smooth. This is something that you can practice at home. I mean, couch fly this. Think about what I've said. Think about what's important to you, what items you want to think through before you go, and then formalize it, standardize it, rehearse it, chair fly it. Make sure that when you get out to the airplane, it's a little bit like going through the motions and make the hardest part of your job slowing down and really, really thinking about it. One of my biggest pet peeves when I fly with pilots is when they, you know, after the run up, they do the checklist, they look at me and they say, are you ready? And I think, well, I'm ready, <laughs> right? And then they key the mic and ask the tower for takeoff without thinking in front of the airplane. So take this procedure, aviators, go out, practice it, chair fly it, try to build it into your system. I promise the next time you fly with your CFI or designated pilot examiner, they will be impressed with this new procedure. Uh, my thanks to the sponsors for their support of this show. Um, also to the patrons, without that support this just wouldn't be possible. If you want to see a, a longer length lesson video of some of the standardizations I teach before the run up, uh, the passenger briefing, taxi turns, the cigars acronym, all that sort of stuff, there is a video on the Patreon page, patreon.com slash learn TFP. I think I published it last Friday um, and it shows a longer lesson with Paul and I. Um, thanks to the patrons for their support. As always, my thanks to you for watching this video. Please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell so you get notified of uploads, share amongst your friends. Come visit me at learnthefinerpoints.com. Uh, come by, check out our Facebook page. You can always find me on Instagram at learnthefinerpoints. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best. Runway 30, that makes sense. We got 250 winds and set at six. Looking like it's a little stronger right now uh, than it was reported, but not too bad. Crosswind uh, practice, yeah, so we're gonna have a slight crosswind takeoff. All right. Uh, tower pause, over basically, okay, so if we get, we're gonna take off with full power. If we're gonna call our call off point. Cool. Yeah. I'll take it if we have an issue in the motor today. We'll call you. Okay. Um, we'll, yeah, it'll be obvious. I'll just call my plane.